This is EB Synth. It's a piece of free software that lets you apply a single painted frame of a video and apply that effect to the whole scene. In their examples, they use it to add a painterly look to real footage. And because I'm an animator, I thought, I bet you could do that to some animated footage and get some cool results and maybe be able to change the style of a whole animation with a single frame. So let's give it a shot. Here's the basics of how EB Synth works. You need a PNG sequence of your original scene, which you can render out from After Effects. And then you need a PNG of the frame you want it to take the style from, which is your keyframe. Now this isn't an artificial intelligence software that can invent how objects might look that aren't in your reference keyframe. It takes the information from that keyframe and applies motion from the footage. Your stylized keyframe needs to match the content of the original footage pretty closely. With EB Synth open, you select the folder where your keyframes are, select the folder where your original video PNG sequence is, select the output folder where you'd like it to be rendered, and note down here what frame your keyframe is. Click Synth and you're good to go. They've got a much more in-depth tutorial on their site where they go into multiple keyframes and more details. So check that out too. Now let's get to our experiments. The first thing I did was take their test footage of this small domesticated kitten and applied a much more stylized version to test where the breaking points would be. And this turned out a lot better than I expected. Besides the side of its face here at the end, the rest looks pretty good. And we could fix that by including another keyframe with a cat in this final position here. But I was pretty keen to go ahead and test it on The Simpsons, which I've got two different scenes to show you. The main benefit of this software is how much integrity of the style it keeps in the moving footage, which is amazing. That does mean that you do have to provide it with a frame created specifically for this purpose. So some illustration or digital painting skills are required. But hey, I traded a few dozen thousand dollars and four years of my life for an art degree, so let's put that to use. I picked this scene from The Simpsons. But then I'd be afraid of smothering him. Yeah, and then we'd get the chair. And I picked this sequence with Homer because there's a little bit of movement in his shirt and head and a bit of lip sync, but not too much more going on. So this should be some pretty easy testing grounds. I picked this keyframe and painted this in Photoshop. It took maybe an hour or so, including the background. My goal was to see if I could turn this short scene into this overly rendered, strange, faux 3D version of The Simpsons. So when I apply that keyframe to our footage and render it, here's what it looks like. Then I'd be afraid of smothering him. Yeah, and then we'd get the chair. Not, not, not too bad. It's way better than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. The pupils going missing at the end here are the, the most frightening, but I think we can go in and fix that by just adding a shape layer and changing their positions a bit. The movement of the head and the shirt, I think, is really good. It loses some of the hair, but that's understandable when you get to a certain age. And its interpretation of the mouth closed and variations of the mouth shape uh, overall pretty good, despite being a bit, you know, a bit janky in some areas. It handles the mouth with no visible teeth, fine. But when we get to the view where we see a full mouth of teeth, that's when it starts to struggle, because we didn't have that information in our keyframe. But overall, the mouth looks pretty good. Now let's try some other inputs. Here's a keyframe with an extra eye and a stretched muzzle. And this ends up kinda like you'd expect. The extra elements I've added kind of get ignored because there's no equivalent lad marks on the original footage, so there's no 2D motion for them to really be tracked to. An upside down head works about the same. So does this version with a Bart head. And some glitchy ones as well. This one that I did with a liquify tool in Photoshop is the most horrifying. The way it looks like the pupils go away and roll up into the back of his head and the way the mouth kind of stitches together is very, very unpleasant. I don't, I don't really like that at all. I also tried adding some more realistic lighting to my animated bat logo, which went okay, but there are quite a few artifacts which would require a fair bit of cleanup before it was actually usable. And I did a more stylized grainy version as well with about the same results. This is the second Simpson scene I chose. What happened here? Oh, nothing much. Just a little incident involving the boogeyman. I chose this scene because it has a lot more animation with Homer and to see how EB Synth would handle that. I painted over Homer in a bit looser with some more dramatic lighting. And this one as well did a lot better than I thought it would. What happened here? 
Oh, nothing much. Just a little incident involving the boogeyman. Now, obviously, a lot of these frames don't look great. It's got a lot more areas where the animation breaks because there's more animations and I only provided one keyframe. But I suspect painting more keyframes and adding those to EB Synth would help a lot with those. But for just one keyframe of reference, I was pretty blown away by this software, to be honest. And I do absolutely think that there will be professional uses for this type of software on animated footage in the very near future. Please let me know down in the comments what other animated properties you'd like to see me vandalize with this and some other cutting edge software. I'll see you in the next video.